Okay, let's share screen. I have, I have a reference material here. So uh, I guess no, that we were able to cover pretty much um, the first three chapters and that includes um, introduction to agricultural marketing. And your, you will be presenting your examination outputs per group, no? I think that's July 3, if I'm not mistaken. Amaba, July 3. And that's a Friday. Okay, so I'm expecting everyone to do rehearsal or to, to, to come up with a presentation because uh, I will be um, grading you uh, individually as, per, as well as per group. And that, that will be your uh, examination uh, score for, for this first exam. Okay, so based on the syllabus i will now be discussing consumer markets and consumer buying behavior and this is in particular of the first one of the first topic that we're going to discuss under uh, the industrial marketing or more commonly known as b2b marketing or the business to business marketing so you were not that one no you were already aware of the difference between consumer marketing and industrial marketing the focus of um, consumer marketing is more on satisfying consumers or individuals based on how they behave and what they want. But in the, in the context of uh, industrial marketing, it's actually serving and catering in businesses or the industry that serves also as customers. So you are a company that addresses the needs and wants of an organization or a business or an industry okay so these are large by nature and by fact uh, industrial marketing or the b2b marketing accounts to 60 percent of all the purchases around the globe 40 percent is divided uh 40 percent is accounted by um purchases of individuals or consumers okay so here's the thing uh, we're going to discuss preliminarily uh the model of consumer behavior again uh this is covered pretty much under consumer behavior class uh characteristics affecting consumer behavior types of buying this uh buying decision behavior buyer decision process and the buyer decision process for new products now these have implications to b2b marketing or industrial marketing so we're going to understand first the behavior of individuals before we collectively discuss uh industry standards Okay, so accordingly, consumer buyer behavior is defined as the buying behavior of final consumers, individuals, and households who buy goods and services for personal consumption. So take note that in individual uh, or consumer buying behavior, it particularly focuses on personal consumption. Okay, so that, depend, that personal consumption is predicated by or is affected by your uh, preferences now your 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 uh, your preferences uh, it also is um, going to affected by your lifestyle consumption values uh, your culture your reference group so these are in these are um, factors that affect or shape your consumer consumer buyer behavior now, taken as a whole, consumer, different consumers uh, with specific consumer buying behavior, or a million of those people, is actually our basis in understanding that every individual in, in, this, in this industry matters. So what we're going to do now is to identify the common behavior so that we can plan a common product and we, that will become an implication for uh, production. So, alam natin na uh, uh, Filipinos love rice. That's why, if in case you are a provider, if you are an agricultural marketer, then your production will be focused in cultivating rice. Okay? So, alam natin that Filipinos are meat lovers. No? So, they're meat lovers and they also love uh, sweets. So, ikaw, yung, 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 yung conception mo or yung, yung production plan mo should focus on addressing the totality of the of, of the behavior of these people. But 
uh, if in case ang imuhang take is more of a consumer buyer behavior, you're just actually basing your production based on taste and preferences of a few. So say, like 100 kasi sila kabuk vegan, so sila gid yung imuhang primary consumers. No? And then, um, the difference between the two is that when you plan for production intended for industries rather than individuals, you're going to you know, you're going to think of a lot of possible uh, individual behaviors or possible constraints or power that affects these industries to buy from you. Okay, so unlike consumer buy, buying behavior, you're focusing on the individual. For in the, for B2B marketing or industrial behavior, you're focusing on the collective behavior of the people inside that industry or inside that organization or area. So for consumer markets, all the individuals and households that buy or acquire goods and services for personal consumption are considered to be final consumers. Now note our definition for marketing. So marketing is defined as a system of business activity designed to plan, price, promote, and distribute something of value, one satisfying goods and services for the benefit of the market present. Now take note of the, of the terms for the benefit of the market present. So when we say market, it's actually uh, industrial users or those companies or industries that buy from you because they need your products or services. Second one is ultimate consumers. Now, ultimate consumers or final consumers are referred here under consumer buyer behavior because the final consumers are individuals who buy because they're thirsty or hungry or they need warmth or something. Okay, and then all of the personal consumption of final consumers is known in, as consumer market. So yung mga pagkain natin ngayon, yung, yung nakikita natin ngayon during pandemic, we need to survive, we need to eat, we need to drink. So all of the things, you know, all of the products bought by these individuals during these times is an example of a consumer market because there is a specific market targeted specifically for personal consumption. So this is... Uh, in contrast with industrial market, where in our target are companies, you no, know, with organizational needs. Okay. Next one. So here's a model of consumer behavior. So for for one, um, we're we're going to start with a discussion on individual behavior, Muna, before we proceed with the with, with the actual industrial setup. So under this model, we have the environment. So we have marketing stimuli and other types of stimuli so we have product price place promotion packaging process people okay so these are the seven p's or the marketing mix these are marketing stimuli and we also have external factors we have eco economic technological social cultural political legislative environmental so among others these form the the, the great external environment and these external environment has an impact on our consumption. So, anong, uh, ano yung impact niya sa atin? So, we call ourselves or we call our thinking, you know, we call our biases, preferences as black box. The black box contains your characteristics. So, your characteristics are demographic, psychographic, economic, or um, social socio-cultural in nature. So when we say demographic, that means it pertains to your household characteristics, whether you are a male or a female, whether you, your religion is like this, nabawal kakain ng pork, so that affects your cons consumption. Or whether or not you are living in a, in a rural area or an urban area, whether your income is like this, you know, that's your characteristic. As to psychographics, we're telling here of lifestyle related concerns so it 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 actually uh, pertains to your consumption values ikaw ba is mahilig ka bang bumili na impulse o oh, impulse buyer ka ba so kapag may sweldo ka one day millionaire ka ba so that's a psychographic element so meron din tayong as uh, tinatawag na kuripot no so magunaw na lang yung mundo hindi pa rin oh my god you're here sorry oh my god you're here <laughs> Okay, and the second one is buyer's decision process. So you're, you, you, there's just a two types of buyer decision process. It's a simple decision making and 
it's also uh, there's also the complicated one. So a simple buying behavior. Uh, I'm sorry to tell. Um, men usually has a simple buying behavior. So what they want, they just buy it if, if in case they have money. So ma understand natin yan kapag pupunta yung mga lalaki sa mall naka pattern na yan kung saan sila pupunta. So kapag papasok sila sa department store, meron na silang specific route na tinatahak. No? And then they buy from it, they go to the cashier and then leave the mall. But for women, it's quite complicated. It's quite complex because, you know, there are a lot of things you know, that can actually attract a woman when it comes to shopping. So, ang ruta gidana no is first floor mo na siya dire pag uman na happy pang dire pag uman mo balik na pod pag uman na pod mo adun pod sa pikas nakakita na pod pag o pag uman mo to sa cashier unya pag gawas na pag nakitaan mo balik na pod sa cashier kay mo palit adun na pod pag second floor and that's complicated but you know these kinds of realities in 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 buying behavior are actually already understood by our industries so a lot of a lot of companies now offer beauty products offer a product line so intended for women there are even women companies uh there are even companies that manufacture products exclusively for women and it's very rare for you to to see a company that exclusively sells men products sometimes men products might be promoted but it's under the same company that focuses on women beauty like Victoria's Secret so Victoria's Secret is a women uh, is a is a uh, is a company founded no mostly by women but later on they diversify diversify their products to include men as well as the third the, the third one or the LGBTQIA plus so kind of see those are those are things no that serve as that that are manifestations of individual buying behavior and decision process in buying. Now, taken collectively, this individual consumer buyer behavior becomes an industrial scenario. And this industrial scenario becomes a basis in the creation of products and services by industries or for the industry. Now, after the black box, after your mental cognition, after you decide, you have now specific responses tailored fit you know, for that purchasing behavior. So we have buying attitudes and preferences. No, mas ganahan ta o color. Ganito ka ng pamalit o polo nga ka ganing ganahan kay ta o ka ng mga peach color or ka ganing mga pastel colors rather than dark colors. No? So parang ako sa kuwa, ganahan siya dark. Mga black colors, kita kung ganahan kay sa pastel. Kaya naman, dali, mamansyahan ang pastel colors or ka ng mga white. Or if in case nga ka na ganing mga t-shirts nga pang uran, ka ng mga unique clo nga gray, yun na ako. Ah, nga naman, because na ako yung specific bias on gray. Okay, di kayo siya itom, di kayo siya init, di po kayo siya dali mahukaw. So, ano, gray, yun na ako. So, now, taken collectively, kung daghan ka yung mga tao like your teacher na ganahan o unique clo nga gray, that will affect their thinking. That will affect the decision of the company to create a lot of them. Because a lot of people need them. No? Not only here in South Korea and in, in, in Japan and South Korea where Uniqlo is a thing, but it also includes other countries with Uniqlo department stores. And distributing these products to these department stores is a manifestation of or is a proof that the supply chain for, for these products are actually of an industrial level. Okay. So second one is purchase behavior. What the buyer buys, when, where, and how much. Oh, ano sa atag palit ng t-shirt? Ako'y kailang ha. Kaya nang ma-stress siya kung wala siya suutun every Friday. Kailangan yun siya mamalit kung sanina every Friday. Kaya dapat lahi-lahi yun ang iyang sanina. Kaya dapat dili pwede nga masuot niya ang same nga niya sa nga sanina in another Friday. Kaya na siya ka-uwi. To the point ka mo. Hindi man kaya siya. Mutang na lang siya. Pamalit dito siya ka-uwi. Kaya nga na gani na, kaya nga na tao. Na po yung mga tao na ka na gani, ganahan mamalit, o ganang galing naling special condition. No? So ikatulo is, na po yung mga tao na ganahan mamalit o sinin na uh, during sweldo as a gift to themselves. Now these individuals, no, these individuals have been accounted to by these industries, by the industries, by the textile industries and the uh, clothes manufacturing and 
uh, clothing line businesses. They were already considered na nai mga tao ngayong ano. That's why we need to have perfect timing for our production. We will produce uh, according to the not to the individual behavior, but but, but the overall behavior of this people. Eh, kung ang mga ang mga industries class kapag if in case they're not going to consider here the timing of the timing of their production, they might be spending so much on the production, but their sales might be affected because it might not be that well, no, it might not that perform very good. So their sales will be affected if they are not optimal in their production. And one way to have an optimal production is to understand when, where, and what to produce during this business. Okay, and finally, we have brand and company relationship behavior. So there are buyers like us who have the pension to buy something or who have the preference or liking to buy something with brand. We call it stat, we call it brand recognition or brand loyalty. So when we recognize that our need is simply to satisfy our, our thirst to be recognized to have this brand, we call it status signaling. So status signaling means if in case you have an Hermes bag or you have uh, you have um, a brand, so you have uh, designer bags or you have um, Louis Vuitton as your bag, then that means you are treated as usashal or you're actually treated as someone who has great taste, a, a great preference or who can afford more. Okay, so if that's the kind of scenario, if that's the kind of thinking that we have, we call it status signaling. We signal ourselves based on the status of a particular brand. Okay, so these are, uh, this is a model of consumer behavior. So, okay, so here's the effect. You know, these, the, these are the discussions that I, that I had uh, a while ago. So uh, here are the things under environment, um, the buyer black box, and the buyer response. So characteristics affecting consumer behavior. So we have cultural factors. So now cultural factors, we have culture, we have subculture, and we have social class. So for example, Filipino, the Philippines as a country, as an overall culture. We have this uh, reputation that Filipinos are like this. But there are a lot of Filipinos. We have Filipino women. We have Filipino men. We have Filipino gays. We have Filipino lesbians. Filipino lesbians. We have Filipinos who are uh, Elongos, Elocanos, Babawenos, Cebuanos, Imperial Manila residents. So we have these are some Okay, so when we say Elocano, that means Puripo. So that's a subculture. That's, that, that, that's the kind of identity that they have. And that has an effect in their consumption values as well. For example, for Cebuano, Cebuanos are gahig ulo. No, bisa nagkuan, isikyu, hala magpiesta ni hapon. So that has an effect also in, in their purchasing. So when we say Davaweno, even kis mugawa si Inday o si Mayor Digo, uh, si Mayor si Kuan President Digong managuk sa sulod sa kuan sa balay kung mahadlok ng mabuyagan kay bawal lumabas. So compliant ang taga Davao. When we when we talk about women in Filipino women, Filipino women women has the the penchant for skin whitening. No? So, ang products po nato is purely uh, is dedicated to whiten our skin. So, yan ang pato. So, those are cultural factors and subcultural factors. We have social class as well. So, ito yung um, ang ating kalalagyan sa ating ekonomi or sa ating lipunan. Or these are our social statuses. So, for example, if you have an in family income like this, then you're considered to be middle class. If in case you have a higher income, then you be, uh, you 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 can be part of the upper middle class, or you can be the lower rich class. But if in case your income is just like this, then you might be one of those who are in the lower middle uh, class to the uh, poor class or the very poor or the below poverty. So these social classes can also affect our consumption behavior. And industries are already aware on who their target market is based on social class or economic class. The social factors.
papers. We have reference groups. Who do we refer to if in case we buy something? Is it someone who is your, you, can, you consider a friend? Is it uh, your teacher? Is it artist? That's why in Philippines, we have this liking. We, we tend to buy something that is endorsed by our idol actors and actresses. So these are reference these are reference groups. Medyo noisy sir. Noisy ko. Ako ang noisy? Ay okay, kaya nai nagako ako. Nai, nai nag-prepare sa accreditation dito sa Kilo. Okay, second one is family. So these can affect our consumption values as well. So, ayaw lagi ko i-chat, nag-discuss ko. Okay, so family. So your family members shape your consumption. So we also have roles and status. So our roles and status usually is whether or not you are a manager, you're in the rank and file, whether or not you're a CEO or an executive. So we have... Okay. One minute class. Okay, we we have personal fact we have personal factors. So first is uh, we have age and life cycle stage. So you know what class? Uh, there's a difference between Filipinos and some other uh, foreigners when it comes to life cycle, uh, age and life cycle. For one, our average survival or lifespan is 70 years old. Compared with the British, they have 85 years old. That means Filipinos die easily. And that because and and that's and that's where uh, and that's where we have this interest in investing in life insurances because we acknowledge the fact that we die early, like seventy years old. Unlike the British, unlike the Italians, they have they live up to eighty and eighty-five, and they can still walk, jog, and enjoy the beach. Kanang si Panato ga ugud ugud siya. So. You know, the kind of lifestyle that we have or the, this life cycle that we have in comparison to other nationalities affects our consumption behavior. Okay, that's why. Second one is your occupation. Usually here in the Philippines, we have this bias of affording respect depending on the nature of your work. We have this tendency that we equate our respect to the kind of work that our friend or someone we're looking or facing depending on their occupation so if he is a manager we afford greater respect but if he's a janitor we sometimes not treat them right or we have minimal respect or if in case you're a call center agent the usual notion of uneducated people sorry the, the usual notion of, of these people says that those working call center agents are non-educated so we have that kind of tendency where in fact, you know, being a call center, a worker of the BPO industry is really good because they're actually being paid well. The insurance is good, perks and benefits are good, and they're actually receiving more than what we, we receive as rank and file. But sometimes, you know, the notion is stronger in this, in this one. So the kind of notion of personal biases are actually included under personal factors. So we have economic situation. So we do have, we do afford a lot of respect to people who have a lot of money compared to those who have no money or cannot even live um, with three square meals a day. So we have different treatments on that. And normally, no, normally this kind of setup is taken macroeconomically because sometimes if you if you produce products and services that's really intended for people who can really buy from you because you know doing business is not a charity case okay next one is lifestyle our lifestyle is affected by our occupation and economic situation so if in case we have more money then we have better life we also have personality and self-concept so people who are outgoing tend to go to beaches tend to go to uh, bars shopping, you know, buying something. And those who are actually introverts are people who just love to read books, consume coffee, bake their cake and everything. So 
that kind of situation only proves that these two different people have different needs or they buy from different so from different stores or they have different um, likings that's why industries should be amenable or aware that these are the types of people with different personalities and this is the usual preferences of these people so we have psychological factors sorry we have motivation perception learning beliefs and attitudes so these are the ones that shape and affect buyers behavior when when we're talking about consumption okay so Characteristics affecting consumer buyer behavior. So culture, you learn values, perceptions, wants and behavior from family and other important institutions. We have subculture. So uh, Filipinos, ano yung subcultures, uh, subculture na example? Itong sinasabi natin na we, we group a, a specific um, race according to their ethnicity or according to their geopolitical geopolitical region. So for example, yung sinasabi natin, itong mga taga Luzon maaangas daw ito. Or when 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 we're talking about differences of geopolitical areas, uh, sometimes these people from Luzon or those living in Manila have sense of arrogance the way they talk because they believe that they're in the capital. Compared to us that we're living here in Davao City, they're thinking that we, we are of inferior knowledge to them. And that's normal because anywhere in the world, in anywhere, anywhere in the world, you will actually see that there are geopolitical or geological, geological or geographical differences that affect a person's behavior. So subcultures can also be according to ethnicities it can be um, based on a filipino who is a tagalog a filipino who is a batanggenya with a sharp accent of a tagalog we also have uh, people in the north you no know, we have the elocanos in, in in the elocos region we also have the people from cebu or in the central visayas who are said to be the first one to be christianized or baptized under catholicism and we also have people here in mindanao the people in mindanao is actually a mixture of the moros who actually live here for a long time and those living in in, in the visayas and transferred here in mindanao to look for golden opportunities after we have so much after Cebu and after Visayas has more than more than that more mo modernized hundreds of years ago class okay social classes no so it's measured by a combination of occupation income education wealth and other variables so we consider this as important things you no know, to consider when we buy because you know our education will give us a guide on what to buy according to our educational status so well if in case we're wealthy we can buy something like this you know? uh, when we have this income the higher the income the higher is the consumption and that's a reality Okay, so characteristics affecting consumer behavior. So we have membership groups. If you're a member of this particular group, then that means you have a specific behavior that is different from others. So we have aspirational groups or groups an individual wishes to belong to. So if in case you want to belong to, to an elite group of something, then you're going to live by their standards and you're going to, to buy something that is equal to the to, to the preference of that aspirational group. Now, reference groups is something or a group that, that actually influences us to uh, in the formation of our attitudes or behaviors. So for example, our religion is a kind of reference group. If in case you are, uh, if you are um, um, practicing Islamic faith, then you, it's taboo for you to buy something like this and something like that or do something like this and do something like that. And that can actually affect your consumption values okay so we have the definitions here uh when when it comes to aspirational groups if you want to go to 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 really live a good lifestyle and if you want to have um good body builds or if you want to shed your fats 
then you can be a member of those uh, bodybuilding groups or uh, fitness conscious groups. And that is, a, that is actually an aspirational group that is self-improving. So people often are influenced by reference groups to which they do, do not belong. So they aspire to be a member because right now they're not actually a member and they want to be like that. That's why my consumption should be like this in order for me to belong to that group. Okay. So next one is, okay, so groups and social networks. Right now, we are awash with a lot of technologies and these technologies affect even our communication and our behavior. So uh, we tend to have social networks. Well, we have a lot of social networks. I believe that you do have more than one social media account. That's not, that's not only Facebook. You might have Twitter or you might have Instagram or you might have LinkedIn. That's a professional net, uh, social networking uh, site. So word of mouth, influence, and buzz marketing. So for example, if you follow specific people uh, with a lot of followers in YouTube or in Facebook or Twitter, they tend to suggest something that you like or that or being like them actually makes you buy something that is affiliated or linked to them. That's why they are said to be opinion leaders. And opinion leaders are people within a reference group who exerts social influence on others. So who loves Korean groups here, Korean dramas, Blackpink, uh, 21, Girls' Generation, Big Bang, I love them. So if you, if, if you are, if you, if you're fond of Korean products or Korean dramas or Korean food, then there's specific people inside that inside that group that can actually influence the, the influence your buying behavior. In fact, there are Filipino uh, Filipino teenagers who have formed clubs, you not know, to as a sign of their adoration for that uh, specific groups or opinion leaders. So, and the leader serves as the opinion leader of that group. And they're the ones, or they're the ones who influence you to buy something like this. Because if you if if you cannot buy something like this, then your identity will be questioned as a member of the group. So they're called influentials or leading adopters. So they were the ones who first adopted the preference, or they first adopt, they first adopted the um, product or service, and let others follow suit. Okay, so marketers identify them as brand ambassadors. Now, you know, um, brand ambassadors here in the Philippines is sometimes um, treated as a glorified, um, glorified identity of uh, good-looking men and women who are tapped by these companies to wear something like this for them. So when, when you are a brand ambassador, it's also a lucrative job because you're getting paid to wear or to use this. And then because you have a lot of following or uh, you have a fan groups or a large fan base, then you can influence them to buy the same. Okay. So what are the characteristics of groups and social networks? We have online social networks. Uh, defined as online communities where people so socialize or exchange information and opinion. So, um, commonly this is found in Facebook or in Twitter. So they include blogs, social networking sites like Facebook and virtual uh, virtual worlds that serve as your second life. So if in case um, you have online chat groups, that can be uh, a group network as well. So other other factors we have social factors. So family. So social, social roles and status. So these are social factors as well. So we do have personal factors as well. So that includes your age and life cycle stage. So nasabi ko na yun kanina, I already said it, that you know, other people or other races uh, live 10 years, 10 to 15 years longer than average Filipinos because we usually die from 60 to 70. So we have occupation, we have economic situation that includes personal income, savings, and interest rates. So lifestyle. So lifestyle includes activities, interests, and opinions. And these are actually shaping our individual behavior. If you are uh, a person who is lavish in terms of lifestyle, so you tend to buy items that are costly. And it actually makes you happy compared to people who stick with that cheaper alternatives. And you know, that makes you contented. 
So personality factors. So I will be giving you an assignment related to personality in which you're going to you're going to answer um, the Meyer Briggs personality inventory so that we can identify the kind of personality that you have in terms of buying behavior, relationships, uh, working with colleagues, friendships, as well as love lives. We're going to identify that because that could be a good case for discussing individual behaviors and individual preferences. So I'll be posting it as an academic prompt uh, later. So we do have um, a lot of personality factors. In fact, or according to the 16PF test, we have 16 personality factors clustered under five global personalities, according to the, to the big five personalities. I'll take note of the, of the types of personalities according to the big five inventory, as well as the 16PF, so that you can have an advanced reading on this. So another one is characteristics affecting consumer behavior. So aside from personal factors, we have different uh, personalities here. We have autonomy, dominance, adaptability, aggressiveness, and dependence. Okay, so psychological factors, motivation, alam niya na to, you already know this, perception, learning, beliefs, and attitudes. So uh, definitions of these are actually here. A motive is a need that is sufficiently pressing to direct the person to seek satisfaction. We have a lot of motivation research conducted since the 1960s. You know? So these are psychological in nature and later they're actually focusing more on applications in marketing. So you already know this. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So we have uh, five levels. Now we start with the bottom one, which is the most important one to be satisfied first and ends with self-actualization. So self-actualization is on top of the pyramid and is only achieved when you satisfied the first four foundations of the pyramid. So here's a definition of perception. So sometimes we do have selective attention, selective distortion, and selective retention. So I'll be asking this question in, in the academic prompt as well. So might as well you need to research these terms in Okay, so th these are the definitions. So selective attention is the tendency for people to screen out most of the information to which they are exposed. So when I say selective attention, these are 100% information about it, but you only care about the 10% because that's the only information that you value the most and you don't care about the 90%. For as long as it has vitamin C and that matter, that, that's what matters. But if you disregard other essential items which actually have uh, impact to your consumption, then you are in danger. So selective attention is somewhat uh, dangerous. If in case you're going, you're not going to account every information that's valuable, valuable to your consumption. So we have selective distortion. So it has the tendency for people to interpret information in a way that will support what they already believe. This is the kind of this is the kind of behavior that the Delawans and the DDS have. So we call it selective distortion. And this kind of, of impression is actually bordered or bound to uh, encourage or inculcate belief on fake news because we only believe what we believe is true and not what, what actually is true. And we have selective retention. So we only remember the good points and we forget the other, the other brands or the other points that, that do not matter. So it's selective retention. So we have the, uh, psychological factors as well. We have learning. So it can be uh, an interplay of the following factors. We have drives, stimuli, cues, responses, and reinforcement. When you say drive, you have the energy. So when you say stimuli, you have the incentive. Okay. When you say cue, that is the signal. Responses is your replies, and re reinforcement is support. Okay, so belief is a factor of knowledge, opinion, and faith or trust. You know, so when we say brand trust, your opinion about the brand and your knowledge of the brand that actually shapes your belief of the brand. So when we say attitude, no? so or when we are being called atichona, that means you are a person with attitude. So it describes a person's relatively consistent evaluations 
feelings and tendencies towards an object or idea. If you are a bitter person, if you, if you have a bitter disposition towards your past love life, then that can actually shape your behavior. So if in case you can hear sounds or songs that actually remind you of your bitter past, then your usual coping mechanism is to eat chocolate, eat ice cream, go out and have fun with friends. And, you know, those are things that you spend money for. And that's consumption. Gibulagan ka, then we consume ka. That's a sad thing. So we have types of buying decision behavior. So we have complex buying behavior. I already told you a while ago. So we have dissonance reducing buying behavior or we, we tend to reduce the lack of agreement. We have habitual buying behavior or, you know, you have this mentality of buying from the same store because that's your absolute favorite. And we have variety seeking buying behavior. So this is common among Filipinos. Pili kita mangukay. So sometimes we do bargaining and we look for different items that can actually be compared if what's the best and then buy the best with the cheapest cost. Okay, so here is the four types of buying behavior quadrants. So these are explanations of their de definitions. So might as well erase them. Uh, these are the buyer decision-making process. We recognize the need. We do information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase decision, and alternative. So need recognition. This is the definition. So... We have information search. We tend to look for possible information about a product or service from different sources of information. We have evaluation of alternatives. If in case we have found information about the product or products that we're going to buy, then we're going to evaluate which of them is cheapest and which of them provides you the benefit that matters. And then purchase decision, that means you're going to buy. After evaluating, then you're going to buy. And after you enjoy the product or service, there's what we call post-purchase behavior or decision. And that means whether or not you're going to continue buying from that store or that product or you're going to switch to another product because you are not satisfied with what you have used a while ago. So can you read these discussions already? I'll be posting this one, don't worry. And the key here is customer satisfaction. So customer satisfaction is a key to building profitable relationships with consumers, to keeping and growing consumers and reaping their customer lifetime value. So customer satisfaction is always the central tenet or the central value of every marketing profession. Now, adoption process of new products includes the following stages. We do have awareness. So we're aware that this product exists. We show interest. We evaluate the alternatives. We test the product through trial. And then we adapt and use it wholeheartedly. So that's the adoption process. So these things have an impact on our and on not only with individual decision making, but also our collective decision making, which is the basis of industries to create products and services for you. Okay? So I'll be posting this one in Blackboard as an, as an additional reference material. You can download, download this. If in case you want to uh, refer to our current discussion, I'll be uploading this in YouTube and I'll be transferring this in uh, online classes so that you can have something to review. Okay, as for the announcements of group presentations, please wait for my email or um, post in Blackboard so that we can agree on wh whether or not we're going to uh, present it on a Friday or not. So thank you for coming and have a great day. Salamat.